<laughs> so today we're going to be doing feet because yesterday or last week we did the hand. Um, but I also wanted to include um, one way of looking at the feet. And we all look at our faces and down in our bodies in general. Um, I lots of times evaluate people even just mentally, just, you know, out of feet on up. Um, one of my biggest faults, so I'm going to really sort of not rip me to shreds, but just go into the mathematics of my skeletal structure and how it affects my movement. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, it's just it affects my movement. It just it is what it is. So yes, when I started I was much more rounded and I had the back, that kind of thing, and that's an obvious thing. So I've come a long way, but I still fight this shoulder thing. So when I get more tired, the weight either from, excuse me, breast tissue and just also the shoulders, will you'll see me like if it's the end of the day or whatever, I start to go south. But one of the things I don't do in general, and I just either haven't learned it right or whatever I'm still working on, I'm not very good at when I stand, that I stand from my feet up. I find I probably try and hold my head so clear in the universe, you know what I mean? And, and so the standing is just more work for whatever organization that I've learned. So this is where I'm going to talk about my history. So, so a couple of things happened. I was two weeks overdue, it was 10 pounds, 6 ounces. Um, this is back in 64, so it was a natural childbirth. Um, and I was 22 inches long, so I basically came out like a butterball turkey. So I think one of my first things my dad said is, what, what's wrong with her legs? Because I guess the way I was wrapped around my abdomen. Um, so I had to have, excuse me, I forget. Someone told me once what they were officially called denison boots on. Um, but they're the white boots, you know, the white baby boots, and a bar. So, my mom kept the bar for the longest damn time. I finally, I'm a thrower outer. So, I, from six to nine months, I, I basically was, had a bar in between my feet and these boots to straighten my feet out. So, there's two things that really happened then. First of all, I became very proficient at crawling. Supposedly, you can put me down on the ground and I was down the hallway in three seconds flat. But what probably also happened was, A, you know, if you're sitting here with the bar in between your feet, where's the pelvis? I mean, how am I going to get up? There's just no way, you know what I mean? So I'm not developing any of that conversation. So um, I didn't walk till I was 21 months. And my mom basically was at a party with some nurse there and said, is she ever going to walk? And they're like, oh, she'll do it on her own. And I literally got up at the party and go, oh, you want me to walk? And I walk. <laughs> but... Um, Again, there should have been probably some intervention on mom behalf. So, so, so to show all that too and how it affected me, another thing that had happened, and I'm going to pull my legs up in a, or pants up in a second, but my knees are my standing point. So what that means, so when my feet are out, you can see where my femur goes into standing. So this is my crawl, see? As my feet come out, my leg is available right here. If I go straight with my feet, you should really start to see, especially on the right side, that my femur is not on the leg. So, at my age, at 48, I do worry, God forbid, I have to have knee replacement surgery. I don't know how, because my system is organized for this kind of femur. It is not on the leg. So I'm sure that also has something to do with bringing myself up because in this position to do that you would think I had have, in my mind like AFOs on versus where my feet are out a little bit more this is much more for me for standing for this it's because now I start having a, a little weird conversation going on in the pelvis so just that that little bit half an inch turn of the feet it's unbelievable how it affects your system especially as we age so you know kids are much more pliable that way but unfortunately, too, this is why we do way too much to the kids. AFOs, this, that, and the other. Oh, let's just put boots on her. I mean, like, what are you thinking? I mean, honestly, this with bars? I mean, you know, I don't think they do that anymore. That's when they do just the AFOs and stuff. But even with the AFOs, when you've got the foot like this in a 90-degree angle, okay, now the feet can't even go into runner's pose. And when it's stiff like this, even that, to bring the pelvis up, there's just, it's not happening. Not only that, but 
Um, that just that weight, I have to counterbalance so much, but I'm even saying that with this foot out, if I put now these both feet at a 90 degree angle, even my counterbalance has totally changed. I can't go over onto the pelvis like I need to, and I'm just gonna fall. So that's where a child just avoids it. So I know my conversation in the class today is, is also about feet, but what I'm gonna talk about too is how the pelvis and all that relates to. So with my spine being the way it is, so over exaggerated, I could be like this, look like an old lady, or I can be like this where I can stand up. And the human body is great. We can be complete horrible creatures to, you know, this whole big thing. It's sort of like women before and after with makeup. It's like, <laughs> but, but no matter what, and, and this is if I could work on myself for an hour to finish or, or change this kind of integration right there, which is still my very habitual, and, and I know it, spot, but also to look at the mathematics of just my neck. So, especially in sitting. Now, if I'm sitting, again, I do much better with knees out and feet out. That's just the way I like to sit. If I then have to do this, my pelvis curl, it's very hard for me to, it's not natural to, to go like this and to sit up. So, lots of times, if I'm in this kind of positions or like this, I will round very easily versus being, some people could be up over, like here, I'm not up over my pelvis. I'm just about there, but I mean, again, these are still things I need to, quote, work on. So, same thing here, like, again, for like karate or whatever, for me to get up over my pelvis, it's just, you know, whatever's going on in my hips and this, and the mechanics, that's when you look at the mathematics. Now, you could x-ray me, and a guy would be sharpening their knives. Each vertebrae goes, like, <laughs> it's, it's wild, but you see the profiles, and literally it's like, I'm not in any pain, I do karate, I do Cub Scouts, I could roll around on this floor in three seconds flat. I'm a very active person, but if you looked at me, and compared to me to the to the, the guy in the textbook, it's not happening. And that's where people too look at, you know, oh I had my X ray, my MRI done and you know, my knee is, is quote, you can say it's completely messed up, but it's my knee and, and to me it works just fine. I'm just different. You know, and, and that's how I look at any kids with special needs. That's why I don't go by the diagnosis. I don't go by um you know, who you are, I'm going by what's your movement patterns, your movement patterns, not anybody else's. So, um, so what I'm talking about here, and I'm going to go into the foot and then we'll bring it more close up. If I go to bring my own foot up, just this mechanism, and I did a, a lesson with a six year old, so I'm gonna just show you just that or watch that lesson with the same thing because we were talking about her like this in a sense, the heel relationship, and then also the side sit. So side sit, I've worked out organization that side sit is, is in me because of the heel. My heel can, can rotate out so I can work on the foot this way. Now if you look though, that's where you have to take into consideration though people's scoliosis, their idiosyncrasies, the, the curvatures of their back, the way they sit. If someone's like this, for me to now go side sitting is a completely different conversation. I have to get all the way over to here. So what I'm talking about is, is, is expecting their system or what you need to work on, like maybe we have to work on this and this, meaning as the back rises or the vestibular changes, I can bring into side sitting more versus being like this and trying to do it. Again, there's no, there's no place for it. And, and it's a force. So that's what I'm gonna work on now is the, the foot. But I wanted to show you that kind of relationship of A, not only into the pelvis, because that's where a lot of people see, but how it really travels through the whole body. So now again, when you go and you look at someone, and again, standing up, are they standing up through their feet? Or are they, you know, or how are they how are they doing it? How are they making their presence known? How are they presenting? So if I go to go into a kick or something like this, you know, is my system stable? 
or you know am I looking at a little kid like you know and trying to do it that way and a lot of people say oh it's just practice it's practice it's practice no it's variation you know you need to be able to kick this weight to work on this weight to work on this way back you know and all of that and that's how I learned how to stand on my foot and that's what I'm going to work on working on the foot with the lesson so